Welcome back, friends. Today, we're going to build a couple of workbenches and do a shop tour. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny. Big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. saying to yourself, Jenny and Davis, your shop hasn't even changed that much. Oh, contraire, it has changed a lot in the past year. So we have completely changed how we do woodworking. We started out just doing it as a hobby, and then we decided to have more of like a custom woodworking type business, and those really required pretty much the same shop setup. But now that we're trying to scale and we're doing more of like production work, that's gonna completely change how everything's set up. So basically today we're gonna walk through all the tools we have, all of the spaces we work out of, just so you can get an idea of what our setup looks like, what our shop looks like, and why and how it might be a little different than what most shops look like. Tool number one. This is our shop cat. He never shuts up and meows through the door the majority of the day. Okay, bye. So we have three spaces that we work out of. We have our shop here where we actually build. We have our laser room where we do all of our engraving and packaging. And then we have our office where we do all of our boring computery stuff. So our garage is 19 feet by 19 feet and it's basically just a standard two car garage. It's got a little higher than eight foot ceilings and it has a little bit of extra space toward the back wall. But the one thing we do wanna point out that this is the worst and most uneven concrete floor that we have ever seen. It goes beyond regular inconsistencies in concrete, so we kind of have to get creative and play around with like leveling our larger tools and workbenches and stuff like that. Another thing worth pointing out is that this whole garage only has three outlets. One is a 240 volt plug that we had professionally installed after we moved in. And then the other two, one is for the garage door opener. And it's, I don't even know what amperage the breaker's on, but it's not much. And then we had just one over in the wall over there. So this entire shop is run on a 240 volt outlet and a regular 110 outlet. So we got to get a little creative with how we manage power in the shop. So pardon us if we don't publish that to the internet for all of us to see. I mean, we don't do anything inherently unsafe. It's just when it comes to the electrical in your shop, do it however you see fit. Just don't be like us. So that's all the big picture stuff out of the way. Let's take a lap. We'll start that way. So this is our car working cabinet. It's just full of our personal tools that we use to fix and keep up our cars. Since it is our house, we thought that we at least deserve one little corner of personal space, but that's just about where it ends. Everything else pretty much belongs to the business. Sometimes we use these Allen keys or some of these wrenches for woodworking or business purposes, but most of the time they're used for cars. So this is our tool cabinet. This is where we keep lots of things like screws, sanding pads, lots of consumables and stuff we use pretty much daily, which is why we like it to be really easily accessible. This bottom shelf has a lot of smaller power tools that we use on like a case by case basis, like a handheld router or jigsaw, things like that. We bought this because we needed a solution. When we first moved into our shop, we needed to get going. We needed to get building, setting it up, figuring out our processes. So as much as we would have loved to sit down and design like our perfect ideal 
tool cabinet and spend days building it, we didn't have that time. And so we just needed something to provide us a table to set stuff on and drawers to put stuff in. So we went to Home Depot, found one on sale and brought it home. The drawers are really smooth and nice and they don't slam shut. So that's perfect. It's on wheels. We can move it wherever we want. This table's really nice and smooth. We didn't have to spend time sanding it or finishing it ourselves. It also came with its own power strip in the side. So we can have power now on this side of the shop. We're not just tied to our one outlet on the back wall. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of dislikes with this. So this tool cabinet really started our journey of like just buying what you need pre-made to solve the problem you're having so you can really just get moving. Instead of spending days designing and building something, this allowed us to get started on things that we really didn't have time to put off. And when you transition from a hobby to a business, you start to realize that your time is worth more than spending a little bit of money or trying to save money building it yourself. And this Texas sign, we get a lot of questions about it. Um, Davis's cousin actually built this um, out of like some old, what was it like? Barn wood. An old barn, yeah. Yeah, it was literally an old barn and he used the wood to create this nice decoration. So we really like it. All right, likes and dislikes about this tool wall. It is nice to have all our tools laid out where we can see them. We know exactly where they are. We can grab them really quickly. And it's a nice backdrop for us to film against because we've got like the nice Jenny and Davis cutout that uh, Richard from 42 Fab made for us. So it looks nice, but sometimes I wish we had this wall space to do more things like shelves, but it's also nice to have the tools available. It's like 50-50 for us. We don't dislike it enough to tear it down and put shelves, but we don't like it so much that we would be devastated if we took it off the wall and put in some shelves. And our Taco Bell sign. This was procured completely legally by some college buddies and they left it into the apartment that Davis moved into. Anyways, Davis ended up having the Taco Bell sign that some of our friends had gotten and it's just followed us throughout our shop. A lot of people make jokes like, are you sponsored by Taco Bell? No, we are not sponsored by Taco Bell. We just have a really old Taco Bell sign that's followed us around everywhere. Our toilet is sponsored by Taco Bell. Oh my gosh, no. So next to our tool cabinet is a little bit of dead space underneath the rails of our table saw, but we try to take advantage of it and use it as some storage. So we have a dehumidifier because it gets really humid down here in Houston, especially in the summer, and we want things to actually dry when we glue them. So we decided to invest in a dehumidifier. Uh, I have no idea what make and model it is. We just found one we liked off Amazon, so have fun searching. I don't know, just find one you like. This one works really well for us. And then next is our Makita track saw. Believe me when I say, this is like our favorite tool, our favorite power tool that we have ever invested in. I don't know how we lived without it. We tried so many things before this because we didn't want to drop the money on a good track saw. We tried a doorboard and a circular saw, none of which really worked very well. Basically, all I'm saying is this thing is worth its weight in gold. If you're struggling with making straight cuts like that, invest in a track saw. Best thing we ever did. It's amazing. So we're just gonna take a moment to remind everybody that we have never taken tool sponsors and in the future, we'll never take tool sponsors. So we've always said from the beginning, the reason we don't take tool sponsors is because we don't wanna be tied to a tool that doesn't work too well. Let's say, let's say company A is who we're sponsored by, but company B comes out with a brand new tool that does the job way faster than company A's tool does. I wanna be able to just dump tool A, buy tool B and make money and move forward. I don't wanna be tied to a brand because they're paying us or I feel bad about it. I just, I don't want to be slowed down by that. I want to make money and I want to make it fast. So if we find a better tool or we want to get an upgrade to something, I do not want to have to manage a relationship with a tool company. So that's why we don't take tool sponsors. Everything you see has been bought with our money or our customers money. That's where we are. And this is our grizzly table saw. We really like it so far. Uh, before this, we had a rigid table saw and it worked really well for us, but the motor started to go, the cuts weren't exactly straight, and it was about time for an upgrade. So this is what we upgraded to, beautiful straight cuts. We like it a lot so far. So at the beginning of the video, we said we had some major changes in this shop and the location of this table saw is definitely one of them. If you'll notice, it's not at the heart of our shop. It's not at the center. It's kind of pushed to the side up against the wall. It's on wheels, obviously, so we can pull it out when we need it but it's worked great for us being kind of to the side and just pulling it out when we need it. Um, basically we need the floor space and the flexibility to move things around more than we need the table saw being the center of attention of our shop. Because typically if we're using the table saw, we're not really using any other tool in conjunction with it. So it's faster for us to pull it out from the wall, use it, and then 
push it right back, then tripping over it every other time we're in the shop trying to do something. And this is our small army of pipe clamps. We recently just went out and bought a ton of these because we were batching out our cutting boards and we realized that our sticking point or what slowed us down the most is that we didn't have enough big, nice pipe clamps to do our glue ups in time before we can move to the next step. We're buying the tools that are going to make us more money in the long run. These are three quarter inch pipe clamps and they do exactly what we need them to do. This is our joiner. We're really excited about it. It's not even a secret, but we really like it. This is our eight inch helical head powermatic jointer. And man, we love this thing. What really pushed us over the edge to just buy one finally. It was because we were building a project. I think it was like a big tabletop we were making. And the lumber we bought was rough cut and it definitely was not as cleaned up as we thought it was gonna be. So we got it here and realized that we didn't have like any straight edges on it. So we finally said, you know what? We've been procrastinating buying this thing for a very long time. It would increase our production speed and our efficiency. So we just went out and bought one. And our final kick in the pants came from our friend, Bruce A. Ulrich. Uh, he's an awesome woodworker, YouTuber, if you haven't seen him, check him out. But he's also in the stud stack. And he's the one that really showed us the power of having a joiner in the shop. So if you don't know, the stud stack is our private Facebook group for makers who are trying to build a business. People are buying furniture like crazy right now. And the reason we know that is because people in the stud stack are telling us and showing us. They're making big sales all over the country, even in the midst of COVID. And they're sharing with everybody else in the group exactly how they're doing it and what steps they've taken to be successful. It's an awesome community filled with people that are learning from each other's mistakes. They're celebrating each other's victories and everybody is very passionate about building a business and making money and, and building furniture. And it's just a really cool place where you can learn and grow along with other people who get you. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, the link is down below in the description but this is not for everybody. The only way this group works is if everybody in it is committed to growing their business and genuinely wants to help others learn and grow. So we have to put it behind a paywall. All right, so some likes and dislikes for the jointer. Honestly, we really like it, but it does vibrate and it doesn't quite sit level and it shakes a little bit, but none of that is its fault. That is all the floor's fault. So otherwise, we absolutely love it. It's a wonderful addition to the shop. It saves us so much time. So this is our finishing corner. This is the main shelf that we keep basically all our finishing products on. This is our Fuji Mini Mite 4 sprayer. This is another thing that was kind of expensive, but we decided to purchase because we were so sick of messing around with cheap paint sprayers that really didn't work. They constantly got clogged. And now this one works like a charm every single time we pull it off the shelf. Saves us a ton of time. Other things we have on here, just gloves, rags. Um, we've got our beeswax mineral oil combination for finishing all of our serving boards, paint brushes, stain, stuff like that. The main finish that we use is this General Finishes Endurovar in satin. We use this on all of our nicer items that we make. It's water-based, it doesn't smell that bad, and it protects the wood really well. So this is our two horsepower Harbor Freight dust collector. It works really well. We have not needed to upgrade to anything else since using it. Just the bag, we did change out this bag. This is a PowerTech um, bag on top that filters out smaller particles a lot better than the bag that came with it. But other than that, the actual machine itself has worked well. We just wish we had room for more of them. So connected to this dust collector is some PVC piping that goes along this wall um, for these tools here on my right. And then we've got one longer tube that provides dust collection to our tools against this wall. So the table saw, the joiner, and the planer. And this is our 14 inch Rikon bandsaw, complete with none other than Mac Mona's face. So before this, we just had a little Craftsman bandsaw from Sears, and that really wasn't cutting it. The quality of the cuts weren't good enough for what we wanted to do. So we invested in this one, really like it a lot. We get buttery smooth straight cuts for all of our cutting boards. Well, not buttery smooth. Well, compared to the last one, they're buttery smooth. And this is our, excuse you. This is our rigid spindle sander. We're working on getting it its own stand um, that combined with the drum sander. We wanna kind of keep those together and obviously up off the floor. It works really well, we do like it. We don't use it super often, but when we do need to pull it out and use it, it comes in clutch every time. So still glad that we have it, just need to get it up off the floor. All right, and this is our router table that obviously still needs a door, so ignore our embarrassing mess in here. But otherwise we like it, we built a separate box to actually have our Bosch router sit in. 
And then we've got our Craig um, router lift attached up here with a nice fence. It works well, it's a nice flat area. I do like having a separate space because we do make so many cutting and charcuterie boards. It's nice to have its own designated area to like smoothing the edges and doing all of our roundovers. The dust collection on it is actually fantastic. It's probably the best dust collection on a tool that we have in this shop. It's just a little box that we built around the router and a hose that comes down from behind the fence. This is our brand new baby, newest addition to the woodworking family. This is our Supermax 1938 drum sander. And uh, so far it's worked great. It saves us so much time sanding these boards. It probably saves us around 10 minutes per board just on rough sanding alone. So we really like it for that reason. We've been wanting one for a really long time. Funny story, we had one ordered all the way back in April because now that everybody's home so much and working from home, they have more time to woodwork and start other hobbies. So they were pretty much all sold out. So we were like, man, we've got to order one starting in April just so we can get it by October when we were coming back to our shop after our Air Force training. So we come back, we look for shipping confirmation or any information, there is none. We log in, see that Rockler has completely canceled our order with no notification or email. So everything is gone and three months of waiting was out the window. So we needed a new solution. And at that time, our friend Richard from 42 Fab had let us know that he had one just sitting outside his shop that he didn't really use. It was just acquiring weld spatter. So he was an awesome dude and gave us a really good price and now it's just sitting in our shop. So. Thank you, Richard. And uh, yeah, it's probably our favorite tool in the shop, right now at least. And these are just some pretty basic wood storage racks. These ones we've specifically converted to be more like shelves to hold all of our cutting boards. And here is the whiteboard. We're all familiar with this. It's where all of our good ideas come to fruition. And this is our little baby drill press. He's so cute. His name is Wen. It's the exact same drill press we had in our last shop. Uh, we actually ended up selling the last one and then rebuying this one once we got out here to Houston. This is our miter saw station designed by our friend Christian in the stud stack. So thank you, Christian. It's an awesome design. So this is our Bosch 12 inch sliding compound miter. We bought this one from Johnny Builds. Which is why his old sticker is still here. We kind of like it. But yeah, it does everything we need it to and more. And really our only complaint with it is dust collection. And we know other people have struggled to find good dust collection with this saw too, because there's multiple YouTube videos out there on how to maximize and kind of fix dust collection for this specific Bosch miter saw. We tried Drew Fisher's method of dust collection for this saw, but something's wrong with our box or our design. It, it doesn't work quite right. We're not, we weren't as good at it as Drew was, but it's a solution and it works for now. Then we've got some more wood storage on this wall. And this fan is a really big fan that Davis's dad built for us because he knows it gets really hot down here in Houston in the summer. And honestly, it has helped us out a lot. It helps with temperature control, but more so it just gets air moving, which is a lot of times what you need is just airflow and movement so you're not sitting here in hot, stagnant, humid air. So our newest addition to the shop that we actually just finished building yesterday are these two workbenches right behind me. Um, we used to have one massive one in the middle of the shop, but we just decided for flexibility and mobility around the shop, we just needed two smaller ones rather than one massive one taking up space. We wanted to be able to do separate things at different benches or use them both for the same thing if need be. We have that option. And what we just bought the other day, it hasn't come in the mail yet, is one of those plastic rolly carts, um, kind, of, kind of like a custodial or like janitorial cart that they keep like cleaning supplies on. Anyways, we want that to be able to pile things on like cutting boards or charcuterie boards and move different parts around the shop to go to different like operating areas. Anyways, you'll see it when it comes in. It's really cool. And that was an idea from you guys. Simple, great idea. So thank you guys so much. So that's why you should subscribe to see how your comments actually help us in decision making and planning things for our shop and our business. Well, some of them. So if you want plans for these workbenches, there will be a free download for them in the stud stack. So the last couple things here in our shop are our Mercadero sander and below that is our Festool Domino and dust collection. The entire cart is called Chester. Basically, we can roll this wherever we want around in the shop. It's super convenient. The sander works great. We are so glad we got the sander. It almost feels like you're not even holding it and doing any sanding. Um, the domino really helps us out with sturdiness and integrity of some of our larger kitchen tabletops. The Festool dust extractor hose is really nice because it attaches to almost every tool we have. It works here for the sander, the domino, and our track saw. So it's super versatile and we're not just stuck using it for only one tool. And lastly, we have our DeWalt 13 inch lunchbox planer. 
works pretty well for us. In the future, we would like to get a larger one. We do sometimes want to plane larger boards than we've been doing in the past, but for things 13 inches and narrower, it it's been working great for us. And in all honesty, a lot of our friends have the larger version of this planer, and they've told us they have a lot of issues with snipe, which we don't really have issues with planer snipe at all with this one. So honestly, when we go to upgrade this one, we'll probably just skip his big brother and go to a floor standing industrial model. And our planer is sitting right on top of a J Bates air filter cart. Uh, we're just using an old furnace motor to run ours, and then we attach whatever filters to it that we want. It helps with airflow and it does a really good job of cleaning out all the particles in the air. Welcome to our laser room. So this is our laser room. It's basically just a small guest bedroom that we decided to sacrifice for the good of the business. So here we have our Glowforge sitting on a table. This is where we do all of the laser engraving and the personalization for our cutting boards and charcuterie boards. This is also where we do all of the packaging and shipping for all of our cutting boards and charcuterie boards. And here we have our little futon. It serves as a guest bed, but also our packaging and shipping station. And here we have our scale and our label printer, basically just so we can print all of our own labels, know the weight. We also use it to measure the weight of the little crinkle paper inserts, just so we can get a consistent amount for every single box. Again, smoothing out all of our processes. All right, so likes and dislikes about the Glow Forge. One, it is super easy to use. If you remember, we had our CNC that we were trying to use for this exact same purpose, and it just really wasn't cutting it, so we decided to get what we thought is the right tool for the job, and it's really proven that it is the correct tool for us. So one con is that it's, it's a limited size, so we do have to get a little creative with how we fit and orient things inside of the laser bed itself. But we haven't had any problems yet. It'll also cut through half-inch plywood easy. So if there's ever any templates that we want to make, we can do it right here on laser and get precise, accurate cuts. So another con is that the Glowforge software is very limited and it's even like, it's especially limited if you don't pay for their premium subscription to it. But we do understand that this Glowforge is still basically like a toy for people that want to get into engraving, but we'll be able to choose our own software once we get a bigger laser down the line. Sure. And finally, we have our studio, which if you've watched some of our past videos, you know that we've spent a decent amount of time designing this and getting it to look the way we want because we do film a lot in here and we spend quite a bit of time in this room. So we want it to be set up well. So we usually use this room for mostly Jenny and Davis work, whether that be stud stack content creation. We also do obviously YouTube recording as well as our podcast in this room, but we also do a fair amount of graphic design work for the woodworking business in this room as well. All right, well, uh, that's been the shop tour. Uh, again, like our goal is to get out of this place as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. uh, but we're still trying to learn what lessons this working space will teach us. Uh, I don't know who's still watching, but thank you if you are. <laughs> uh, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, help us yes. out, uh, get the videos to spread to more people. Uh, again, if you're interested in the stud stack, links in the description, all that. Uh, yeah, catch you on the next one. See ya.